To be honest, if I knew the circumstances, I probably wouldn't have come to work. First off, let's get a job and then I'll explain what those scenarios mean. Hello everyone, my name's Tom the Taxi Driver and welcome back to my channel. Stay tuned to the very end to see if it was worth even going to work today. I'm super lucky as I'm coming down Holland Park Avenue to get a job in this area. This is quite rare for me. Normally I have to end up getting towards like Marble Arch, towards Oxford Street area before I get anything. So this is a touch. The gentleman wants to go to Clifton Gardens, in that Warwick Avenue kind of area. Left Labrook Terrace and right into Labrook Road. This brings us out near the Green Cabman Shelter on Kensington Park Road. From there, we're going to get a left into Pembridge Road at the roundabout. From here, we bear around into Pembridge Villas and that becomes Westbourne Grove. We go forward into Bishop's Bridge Road and it's always Sod's Law. As soon as you get someone in your cab, there's always someone who wants to hail you down. Comply the Bishop's Bridge Road roundabout, leave that by the Harrow Road roundabout, where we comply by that, and then leave that by Warwick Avenue. And of course, as we go into Warwick Avenue, someone else wants to hail me down. We take a right into Clifton Gardens and we just drop the gentleman there. Easy peasy. So that starts us off in beautiful Warwick Avenue. And you never know what the traffic's going to be like because, well, it's a weird one. I mean, there's some sort of rail strike on today and it's school holidays. A few people on the WhatsApp group saying, ranks are banged out, not much work about. And I come in, I pick up that guy on Holland Park Avenue, normally way before I normally get work. And there was a couple other hands along the way. But, we'll see. Half three now, let's get amongst it. It's not that easy, and I am empty for some time. To make matters worse, you can see there's quite a lot of traffic in town, possibly because of the mainline railway strike. I go right down Edgware Road, nothing along there, around Marble Arch, and I'm thinking I'll go down Oxford Street. You can usually spy up what the taxi ranks are doing. It's a bit of a litmus test for seeing how busy the streets are. Now, first problem, school holidays. You might be thinking, well, surely loads of people come to town when it's school holidays, right? You're gonna get tourism and stuff like that. Well, yes, that does happen, but the normal rhythm of London is disrupted. So people who work in offices might be taking time off with their kids. So they won't be in town and normally part of their day-to-day -day activity would be commuting to the office, commuting from meeting to meeting, or perhaps there might be events and exhibitions going on. There's generally less of those during school holidays. People who live in London might be away on holiday. They might be taking the kids away abroad, etc. So the normal people that are moving around doing daily shopping and stuff like that aren't about either. Now, of course, with the railway strikes, it goes even further because people who have the option to work from home are going to be doing it on a day of a mainline railway strike. They're not going to try and get into London if there's no trains running. I'm still hunting along Oxford Street. And look, you can see this. Outside of MS, there's three cabs on the rank there. Go to Selfridges, and you can see that that rank is full as well. So I have a little bit of a hunt through Mayfair, Berkeley Square, Piccadilly. Really not much going on. St. James's Street. And look outside the RSE Club. One, two, three, four, five taxis on the RAC. It is looking slim. I head through Trafalgar Square, down Whitehall, Parliament Street, Parliament Square, and I break one of my cardinal rules in the taxi. That is, if you've been hunting for a job, do not join a taxi rank. The best time to join a taxi rank, in my mind, is as soon as you've dropped off. Otherwise, you might spend 20 minutes searching, then sit on the back of a rank and spend another 20 minutes getting through that rank. Whereas if you'd have just joined the rank in the first place, you wouldn't have had to do the 20 minutes of searching, you would just have the 20 minute portion of the rank. Luckily for me today, I'm the only driver there, meaning that I'm straight on point. I don't have to wait for too long before I get these Americans who would like to go to Pavilion Road. Now Pavilion Road runs parallel with Sloan Street and it pretty much goes from Knightsbridge all the way down to Sloan Square. Sod's law, as soon as I'm going along Victoria Street, a hand goes up and there's another one. The way these people have asked for Pavilion Road makes me think they're after the retail end, the, the lower part near Sloan Square. Straight through, Grosvenor Gardens, past the Green Hut, left into Eating Square, right Belgrave Place, left Chesham Place, past the German Embassy. En route, they let me know that the middle part of Pavilion Road, forward into Pont Street, going past another green shelter, over Sloan Street, and we'll get a left into Pavilion Road dropping them there on the left. It's a 13 quid job. They give me a 20 pound note and say, 
keep the change driver touch. That's what you need on a slow day like today. Now that is absolutely sod's law. Drive around for ages, can't find anything. So join a taxi rank. Luckily, I'm not on there for too long. Um, but then as soon as you drive off down the road, I don't know if you saw it, drive along Victoria Street, hand goes up, come up here towards Belgrave Square, hand goes up. And I could guarantee it now, as soon as you get back in the cab, I'm not going to be able to find a job for love nor money. It's just the way it goes. I'm glad that I have got something a little bit reliable about my day today. And that is the super awesome fruity summer flavors of Y Food. Now, you've seen Y Food on this channel before. They're a complete meal replacement shake. So you get a good mixture of proteins, carbohydrates, and fats inside of one of these bottles. So I've got the mango and the strawberry flavor here, but at the time of this video going out, you'll also be the tropical flavor. It's a limited edition, especially for summer. In fact, the whole fruity range is a summer exclusive anyway. So get ahead of the game, order these, so they're all in the fridge ready for when the summer hits. But you don't even need to keep them in the fridge because they're made from long life milk, meaning that you can keep them in the boot, as I do, you can keep them in your bag, wherever you need to be, these are always going to be pretty awesome to go. Not only do these taste amazing, I'm just guzzling away on the strawberry one now as we speak. White Food are giving you a full 10% off your entire order. So you can use that on the limited edition fruity flavors, including tropical. You can do that on the bars, powders, just go nuts with it, get a massive basket and you'll get 10% off that entire order. Just use that link down below or my exclusive discount code, which is taxi-youtube. I could just sit here and guzzle Y food in the sun all day, but I have got to go to work at some point. So let's go. Because of where I am, I'm thinking I'm going to try Harrods. It's very difficult to access the front door or the side door. I can try the back door. So you come in via Walton Street and you forward your way into Basil Street. Looks like every other taxi driver is having the same idea. I don't really fancy blocking the road, so I swiftly move on. Sloan Street, Cadogan Square, Belgrave Square. A serious bit of hunting going on. As I get to Piccadilly by the Ritz, this driver in the white cab flashes me and gives me the signal to say, there's a job over here, mate. I struggle to see it, and by the looks of it, there's plenty of cabs behind him with their lights on, so more than likely, they'll be getting that job if it's on their side of the street. Up Regent Street, St. James's, through the magic circle that is Piccadilly Circus, and Eventually, I'm lucky to get someone coming out of a matinee performance on Shaftesbury Avenue. They get in and just say, can you take me to the car park in Hyde Park opposite the gallery? I love stuff like this because there is no way you could put that into a sat nav and it would give you that exact destination. Because of where we are, I know that I'm going to access Hyde Park from the south. Head down Great Windmill Street, forward in the Haymarket, right Charles Second Street, right Regent Street St. James's. I'm using German Street a lot at the moment just because of timings of the traffic lights at Piccadilly and I'll get stuck behind a bin lorry. Somewhat typical in Westminster. Right St. James's Street, left Piccadilly. Forward through into the Piccadilly underpass and that brings me out onto Knightsbridge. En route, I'm thinking, well, there's two galleries inside of Hyde Park and opposite each gallery, is a car park. It doesn't really matter because obviously on route I can just say to the person is it this car park or is it the next car park you know just north of the Serpentine Bridge. Turns out they're after the one which is north of the Serpentine which is the Serpentine Sackler Gallery not the one south which is the Serpentine Gallery. I know it's a little bit confusing. Kensington Road, left Prince's Gate, left Exhibition Road, forward into the West Carriage Drive, over the Serpentine Bridge and turn right into the car park being extremely careful on this popular cycle lane. The thing that strikes fear into mine and many other cab drivers' hearts when you drop off in somewhere like a car park or a hotel drop off, is there a camera on the way in and out? Obviously the way many car parks work is via AMPR, automatic number plate readers. Uh, but it's always something to bear in mind, it's just an occupational hazard really. Well, fingers crossed I haven't had a fine yet. Now, as I leave the car park, I make note to not go northbound. It's really, really bad driving West Carriage Drive northbound at this time of day anyway. I'm very lucky though that as I go over the bridge going south on the West Carriage Drive, I get this hand, touch. There's always some kind of traffic in the park. So to be able to get a job in to kind of pay for you to get out of the park is well, it's ideal, isn't it? He's not going far. He's just going to the Queen's Gate Hotel. Super simple. We just forward it out of the park through the Alexandra Gate, forward Exhibition Road, right Prince Consort Road, left in the Queen's Gate. 
little shimmy by Elveston Place, and bosh, we can set them down there on the left Queensgate Hotel. I head back to the Knightsbridge area using Kensington Road. As I get by the Bulvagari apartments, I see this hand go up right by the Paxton's Head pub. It's some American tourists and they want to go to Prince's Square slash Kensington Garden Square. Now, Kensington Garden Square always throws me because right by Kensington High Street, you have Kensington Square. And I've done it once in the cab. I've had a lady get in and say, oh, Kensington Garden Square. And I just start heading down towards like, you know, Kensington High Street. And she was like, what are you doing? I'm like, uh, good question. So it's one of those things that I always kind of like mentally have to double process. Like I know what the difference is clearly, but it still does throw you sometimes. Knowing what I know about the West Carriage Drive, because we've just been there, I'm not going to go through the West Carriage Drive. We just go all the way along Kensington Road, Kensington Gore. They actually point out the Albert Memorial en route. And of course, I'm very quick to get in there, tell them all about the Great Exhibition of 1851, past another green shelter, I think it's the tour of taxi shelters today, forward into Kensington High Street, and we get right into Kensington Church Street. And I go one further to let them know that the Paxton's Head, the name of the pub they were just in, is of course named after Joseph Paxton. Yeah. So Joseph Paxton was a gardener, but he was the man who actually designed the, uh, the Crystal Palace for the Great Exhibition. Traffic builds up quite a bit here because there's some temporary lights up by Palace Gardens Terrace. But we have a real good conversation en route about, you know, them coming to London. They were pretty chuffed. We soon get through Kensington Church Street do a right on the Bayswater Road, and I know to get to Prince's Square, we're gonna use St. Peterburg's Place. It's named that because of its proximity to the Russian Embassy. You've also got a very new road there called Kiev Road. It's just a, a short section of Bayswater Road. Cross over Moscow Road, forward Ilchester Gardens, right and right Prince's Square, and just drop them there. I love them, they were like proper typical uh, American tourists. I mean, I, I love it. Um, you know, chances are they've never heard of the knowledge, so you get to do the whole spiel of the knowledge and things like that. Um, but it's like that Her Harry Enfield sketch. This cheese sandwich. <laughs> oh, uh, okay, well, I love the just cheese sandwich. What a wonderful breakfast experience. All going well, though. They were nice enough people. What have we got to do now, then? Um, thereabouts, 10 past six. Well, we've got to get a couple more under my belt before, uh, before that slack period comes in, I think. Now, this is one of the weirdest things I think about driving a cab. There's so many times that as soon as I drop someone off, I'm just quick to get out of there, get to a main road, and try and find my next passenger. Of course, I've stopped to film this little section on my GoPro, thereby having a bit of a break. And amazingly, I get back in the cab, someone's just walking down the street and they hail me down. It doesn't matter if I'm physically actively working, trying to find a job for 20 minutes. I could stop, relax for 10 minutes and then get a job instantly. I don't know, maybe it's the universe trying to tell me something. This gentleman wants to go to Harrods. So Prince's Square, left Hereford Road, forward into Ossington Street. Get our right into Bayswater Road. I don't really want to risk the West Carriage Drive and Kensington Church Street is a bit heavy, Getting into Hyde Park can be a little bit tricky because of the traffic lights that lead up to it. Bayswater Road eastbound, right by Lancaster Gate, is usually pretty bad anyway. At least with Kensington Church Street, I do have options in how I can get off it if it does get a little bit sticky. Eventually we work our way through, left on Kensington High Street, and it's pretty much a similar job I did just picking up those Americans from the Paxton's Head. Right Trevor Street, comply by Trevor Square, leave it by Lancelot Place, and that drops you directly in front of Harrods. Just have to squeeze beyond this rickshaw that's just parked here in the street and eventually able to unload my passengers. I take this opportunity to jump onto the side door as there is a space just opening up. In terms of passenger traffic, it's not as popular as the front door or the back door, but after the melee of trying to get on the back door earlier, I'm willing to take this opportunity for the guarantee of getting on the rank. Just five minutes or so and I'm off of here. These passengers just say Oxford Street. The difficult bit with the side door is sometimes just leaving the rank. I mean, that's a 200 grand Lamborghini in front of me. So, a little bit careful here, Tom. To make it simple, I do go into Hans Crescent, but I just leave it straight by Pont Street. Just straight, easy lines. Forward through into Chesham Place, left into Belgrave Square, leave that by Grosvenor Crescent. Now they've just said Oxford Street, but I'm thinking if I come in from Park Street, that gives them the whole length of Oxford Street, whether they want to get out at M&S, Selfridges, whatever. So round High Park Corner, straight up Park Lane, 
in Brook Gate, forward up a Brook Street, and that first left will take you up Park Street. Now, as we're getting up Park Street, it does get a little bit heavier of traffic here, and they want to bail out because they know that Oxford Street is a short walk from here. Not a problem, and I'm not in a bad spot to then have a little hunt on Oxford Street. There is a little bit of space on the MS rank, but I can see ahead, and there is a bit of space on Selfridges also. So I jump on that one, just a bit of personal preference. I do have to wait here for a little bit. Eventually, someone gets back in, and they want to go to Harrods. <laughs> I wonder how many jobs I can do back to back or what the record is of going from Selfridges to Harrods, Harrods, just that shuttle train, back forth, back. Do I need to explain this route? Do I even need to show you this route? Well, I'll show you the bit on Knightsbridge just because it got a little bit heavier of traffic there. And then put coming into Brompton Road, a little bit heavy there as well. So I dropped the passengers short as the cab in front of me is doing. It just means we don't get stuck in all that traffic. They get to walk down and also, importantly, it means that taxis can then join the rank. Check behind me, make sure there's no drivers that I've blocked whilst I'm trying to drop off. It's fine. I then managed to find a little bit of space on the back of the rank. Some people do give into the temptation of overranking on this rank. And of course, it leads right up to a zigzag, which is pretty illegal to do so. In fact, in the Knightsbridge area, there is a camera that looks directly on that zigzag and it will just issue an automatic fine if you're on it. Not worth doing it because it's highly unlikely you're gonna get a job that's more than 60 pounds. It's quite slow moving today. But again, looking at the circumstances of school holidays, railway strike, you can sort of see why. Will it be a job back to Selfridges? No, but I'm going to the crimp for you instead. So for this, I've just got to get eastbound. I don't wanna to have to bother going around the back of Harrods. So do a right, we're gonna get into Lancelot Place. We'll reuse Trevor Square and Trevor Street because that sets us up for the bus lane at the barracks. Straight through there. Straight onto Knightsbridge. And then we need to peel left at the High Park Corner Slip Road. We're gonna be using the Palace Roads to get us through to Admiralty Arch. High Park Corner, go around there, left into Constitution Hill, comply by the Queen Victoria Memorial, leave that by the mail. Now on the mail, you have this set up into three lanes. It's like a left-hand lane and two forward lanes. Now check out these cyclists and it's a real important note to remember that you can't assume anything. No indication required. Since the coronation, Admiralty Arch has been flowing so well. Basically, they used to have these security barriers right by the exit onto King Charles I Island, meaning that it would bottleneck all the traffic like into one lane there. They've now removed them. Traffic flows pretty freely. It is a doddle. Round King Charles I Island, down Whitehall, left Whitehall Place, and drop them at that proper posh hotel that is the Corinthia. Those massive steel doors directly in front of us on Horse Guards Avenue is very aptly the Ministry of Defence. And as we turn right onto Horse Guards Avenue, you'll see the remnants of the Banqueting House, the only surviving part of Whitehall Palace. This is also the site where King Charles I lost his head. Now, whilst I lose out on these traffic lights, I do get to get inside the head of these Americans. It is amazing how people sometimes just don't hail you down. They'll just either walk towards you and you just see the body language and just know they want a cab. Sometimes there's this weird telepathic kind of like mind stare that goes on. Anyway, they hop in and they say, can you take us to the Doubletree Hotel? And I'm like, well, which one? Can you elaborate a bit more? Oh, Doubletree by Hilton. <laughs> yeah, but which one? A little bit of head scratching goes on and they pluck up the Doubletree King's Cross. I confirm that with my passengers and away we go. Now, a big faux pas from me. As we're going around King Charles I Island, the lady in the back asks, is this Piccadilly Circus? To which I reply, uh, No, this is uh, Leicester Square, madam. I have no idea where this came from. <laughs> Just Maybe because she sort of said Piccadilly Circus and then mentally my mind's gone to Piccadilly Circus and I'm thinking of just squares that are near there. And then of course, clicks. I'm like, no Tom, it's not. The way I backpedal is by adding a salient fact that sort of shows what I'm talking about. Yeah, reference to the great battle of Trafalgar where the man on top of that column there, Lord Admiral Nelson, sadly lost his life. The intro gambit to ascertain whether I know anything about London, I fail at the first hurdle. So I'm eager to get this job done as soon as possible. Luckily, it's around that 8 p.m. time. So the West End is relatively quiet because people are in theatres, in restaurants. It's all kind of settled, really. 
Of course, we can't go through Covent Garden, so I must go round it. Museum Street, right Bloomsbury Way, Ford Fearbowls Road, Ford and the Clerkenwell Road, and we're going to bear left up Rosebury Avenue. From here, we get a left into Amwell Street, and we go past the legendary Johnny Snitchell at Middleton's Deli. Forward into Claremont Square, right Pennantville Road, set down on left via this little forecourt. Bosh. Oh, stretch me legs. Let's go for a little walk. I just wanted to stop here quick because this is the uh, this is the old entrance to Pennant Street. I've never actually been outside of it. It's actually given me fear. This is, of course, where many uh, knowledge boy and girl would have conducted their appearances here from Penton Street, the original Terror Towers. This was the, the prominent one that was in the, uh, the 90s uh, TV show, The Modern Times. Mr. Orm looking out one of these windows somewhere. Ironically enough, now it's actually the, uh, the home of uh, Santander Cycles. There you go. Again, way before my time, they used to do the, uh, the drive, I believe. Part of the, uh, the examination for uh, the driving test, the driving skills examination before you get to drive the cab. So, yeah. 10 past eight, so we're firmly in that slack period, that slack time. King's Cross, no cabs, lots of people. So I might head in that direction and see what we can get. I eventually worked myself into Pancras Road and there's plenty of cabs on the rank and no punters in sight. Let's try something else. I'm just heading back into that West End direction along the Euston Road, left up Woburn Place and we'll go all the way down into say Covent Garden, something like that. This lady hails me from the bus stop here on Southampton Road nice it's always a little bit unsettling when someone hails you from a bus stop couple of reasons first off they could be hailing the bus behind you so you have to check the mirror and make sure there isn't a bus behind you and secondly taking a taxi is far more luxurious and costly than taking the bus so in my mind it's almost like the person sat there and gone oh i'm late for the bus oh, i'm late from getting home i'm gonna take a taxi and they begrudge the fact luckily this lady isn't she's actually very pleasant as it happens she wishes to go to Crown Ridge on Grosvenor Road. This is a wonderful apartment complex right by Vauxhall Bridge and borders onto the River Thames. It's pretty simple, this route. All in the Kingsway, right into the Aldwych. Right Strand. Now, as I pull up on the Strand, I can see one of my colleagues in the offside lane indicating left. And if I look further down the pavement, I can see a gentleman happily standing there. Now, it's more than likely that this gentleman has hailed that taxi and that taxi needs to come over into my lane. So I make eye contact with the driver and let him know, yep, pull in front of me and I'll go around you. It means we can orchestrate the ensuing traffic a little bit better. Comply by King Charles I Island and we're gonna leave that by Whitehall. From here, go forward into Parliament Street, straight over Parliament Square, Leave that by St. Margaret Street, forward Old Palace Yard, forward Abingdon Street, forward Millbank. Comply by Millbank Circus, leave that by Millbank. I'm absolutely convinced that one of the criteria of hiring line bikes is that you must own a pair of noise cancelling over-ear headphones. It's just borderline lunacy. Past the tape written on the right-hand side. Forward it into Grosvenor Road, and then this is the bit where I awkwardly forget where the entrance to the Crown Reach is. I mean... Some of these estates, if you don't drive in them a lot, you can't remember if you drive in the first half or in the second half. The lady points it out to me anyway. Keep an eye out for the cyclists, because of course we've got to give way to the cyclists. And Bosch, just drop her there. Nice. On the way back, I go to Regency Place. You know exactly what goes on here. And I'm on a serious hunt now. Up Whitehall, Pall Mall, St. James's. And then I'm thinking, as it's school holidays, I need to... Stay away from the officey areas and I need to get into the touristy areas. That's where the people are going to be. Headlong Piccadilly and right in the heart of the magic circle, I have this lady jump on in. She just wants to go to Shoreditch House. Nice, lengthy job that's going to get me out east. Check out this guy crossing as he pleases. Ooh, you're hard. Now, from where I am, there's pretty much only two ways I can run this. You either kind of go over Covent Garden or you go under Covent Garden. Basically, Strand or Shaftesbury Avenue. It probably does favour coming down to the Strand, but you do have to cut through quite a lot of lights to get down there and then you've got to deal with the Old Witch. But as we get to that junction of Museum Street, she actually asks, can we go to Columbia Road instead? Which is nice because as soon as we get onto Bloomsbury Way, you're pretty much just a straight line all the way out to Hackney Road and then onto Columbia Road. It's, yeah, just look at it on the map. I sometimes find as well that on a given day, on a given shift, 
you sort of do have a bias for roads you've already used that day. For Clerkenwell Road, forward into Old Street. Amazingly, there is zero traffic at the Old Street roundabout, but the traffic lights still hold us here for quite some time. Through into Old Street with a little bare left here. Now on this little sliver by Hackney Road and Austin Street is Mikella. It's like a microbrewery. It's actually co-owned by Rick Astley. Yeah, you know, never going to give you up. Although, sorry Rick, I've given up alcohol, so never going to not give that up. Right into Columbia Road. Initially she says, can you just stop here? Thinking it's this first pub. But no, she's actually after the Royal Oak. Next one along. Now they actually use the Royal Oak as the blind beggar in the film Legend, where Ronnie Cray goes and shoots George Cornell. Presumably because it's a much nicer looking pub. I mean, just look at the wonderful tiles here and the way it stands out by itself. Beautiful building. Where does that leave us now? It's quarter to 10, so I probably could very quickly sneak back into the West End. I will skim through the city, I think. I go past the Barbican. Barbican's always a good shout. There's sometimes something going on there. I've got to be in town tomorrow at 11.30. Got a uh, Heathrow pickup job, so need to be in town uh, at a reasonable time, so I don't want to be out too late. It's that hunt for another job as I come back in. Nothing going on at the brewery at Chisel Street, and nothing going on at the Barbican either. Going along Hoburn, past the Rosewood, and just outside the beautiful Victorian boozer that is the Princess Louise, I have these two hands go up. They just say, made a veil. Well, sadly, it was in the 1970s at the Princess Louise Public House where the Muswell Hill murderer, Dennis Nielsen, met his second victim, Kenneth Ockenden, and after enjoying a few drinks there, took him back to Melrose Avenue in Cricklewood. And unfortunately, we know the rest. To run this run, we just go through St Giles High Street. I could take the hard right here, go up Bloomsbury Street and Gower Street and get ourselves out onto the Euston Road. Although, I don't know why, I just feel like going up Earnshaw Street, New Oxford Street, Tottenham Court Road. Amazingly, I seem to hit just about every single green light going. Left into Howland Street, forward into New Cavendish Street, right bowls over street, and we wiggle around, wiggle, or is it a shimmy? Might be a wiggle. A wiggle around Great Portland Street to get a left onto the Euston Road right into York Gate and left into Outer Circle. Now leaving it by Hanover Gate is unfortunately here where we're spoiled with the first red light. Right into Park Road, comply St John's Wood Circus and leave that by St John's Wood Road. As I cross over Grove End Road, I ask them whereabouts in Maid of Vale they are. They let me know that they're at the corner of Elgin Avenue and Ashworth Road. Now I pull up my A to Z cabbies mate because I'm not too sure where Ashworth Road is. Left Hall Road, forward into Sutherland Avenue, which takes you past the Everyman Cinema on the south and the Tesco's petrol station on the north, and get the right into Lanark Road. Now I've not used Lanark Road in ages. It runs parallel with Maida Vale and it doesn't have any traffic lights on it. So we'll use that. Left onto Elgin Avenue, go past Maida Vale Station. That's clearly a Leslie Green because of the Oxblood tiles. Comply by the roundabout, leave by Elgin Avenue, and conveniently, there's a space right by Ashworth Road. We'll drop them there. That's me done, I'm going home, but I'll leave another shift video over here for your viewing pleasure. See you again soon.